Hello beautiful people, my name is Garaba Sitole and in today's video we are doing everything economic, mainly focusing on gains from trade, comparative advantage and absolute advantage. So the first thing that we are going to do is to define what comparative advantage means. So comparative advantage means that when you compare the opportunity cost of two countries, there is one country that has a lower opportunity cost as compared to the other country. The country with the lowest opportunity cost is said to have a comparative advantage over that good or service. I'll emphasize that on the example below. Absolute advantage means that one country is more productive than another country. So let's look at this table that we are given. So we have two countries, the US and South Africa. They are producing computers and apples. So if we look at the production of computers, which country has an absolute advantage in the production of computers? We will say that the USA has an absolute advantage because they are producing 50 units, whereas South Africa is only producing two units. For the very fact that they are producing more computers than South Africa, it means that they have an absolute advantage. So absolute advantage means that you are more productive than the other country. Let's look at the production of apples. The USA is able to produce 1,000 apples, whereas South Africa is only able to produce 120 apples. So when you're comparing these two countries, the USA can produce more apples than South Africa. So the USA has an absolute advantage in the production of apples. So a country can have an absolute advantage in the production of both goods and services. However, if a country has... A comparative advantage in the production of one good it cannot have a comparative advantage in the production of the other good we will see that in the example down below so to calculate the comparative to know which country has a comparative advantage in the production of these two goods we now do a calculation of opportunity cost so in the first um, here we are looking at computers, here we are looking at apples, so the USA, so we are looking at computers. So I always say that when you are calculating opportunity cost, whatever item that you are calculating the opportunity cost with respect to should always go in your denominator. So because you are calculating in terms of computers, your computers will go below. So for the USA, we have 50 computers. and a thousand apples this will give you 20 i think yeah gives you 20 and then the you i mean south africa you're calculating opportunity cost with respect to computers so your computers will always go below so they are producing two computers and 120 apples this will give you 60, right? So if you compare these two values, which value is the lowest? 20, right? So it means that USA has a comparative advantage in the production of computers. Comparative advantage. So let us look at for apples. So if it is for apples, apples will go on the denominator and computers will go on the numerator. So for the USA, how many apples do we have? A thousand apples, 50 computers. For South Africa, we have 120 apples, two computers. So this will give me one over 20. This will give me one over 16. So one over 20 in decimal form is 0, 0,05. This in decimal form is rounded to two decimal places is 0, 0,02. So if you compare 0, 0,05 and 0, 0,02, which value is the lowest? This one, right? So South Africa has a comparative advantage in the production of apples because their opportunity cost of apples is lower than that of USA. So do you guys see that USA has a comparative advantage in computers? South Africa has a comparative advantage in apples. 
So that's how you calculate. That's how you determine which country has a, has a comparative advantage. Comparative advantage, you always calculate the opportunity cost. Absolute advantage, you just read from your table and see which, which country has higher values or which country is more productive than the other. Okay. Um, just want to check if you guys can see properly. Okay, you can. So now we are going to be doing gains of trade. So we are going to determine if using the table that we had, whether these gains of trade are mutually beneficial and if they are not, which party do they benefit? So what you have to do, this is like what I do. So what I do is that I write computers and then I form um, I don't know what these are called. I forgot them. I forgot what they're called. But yeah, I form that. And then I write the opportunity cost that I had for computers. It was starting from 20 all the way to 60. So the lowest value will come this side. So I have 20 all the way to 60. And then I write the country's name on top. Right? So for 20, it was USA. And this was South Africa. Right? And then I write apples. I do the same. I write their in. I almost said their inequality. That's not an inequality. Um, the smallest value was zero comma zero two. So I write it here zero comma zero two. Zero comma zero five. This was so. This was for South Africa. This was for USA. Right. And then after I've done this, I go to um, the options that I'm given. So the first option says one computer. So they are talking about computers. So I have apples, I have computers. So I go to the computers one. And then I look at what it's saying about the computers. It is saying 25 apples. So I check whether 25 falls within this interval. Yeah, they are called intervals. I check whether it falls the, within the interval that I've made, 20 to 60. Yes, it does. So if it falls within the interval, it means that it is mutually beneficial. Okay, let us name this A, B, C, D, and E. So A, mutually beneficial. Option B, one apple. They are talking about apples. So I go to the apples table and it says 0, 0,02 computers. So 0, 0,02 is within my interval. So it is mutually beneficial. And then it says one computer. They are talking about computers. So I come here. They're saying 15 apples. 15 is not within my interval. 15 is to this side, right? So 15 is somewhere here. And do you guys see that 15 is to the side of USA? So it is only beneficial to USA. So C, only beneficial to USA. D, they are talking about apples, so I come to the apples table. Hope you guys can still see. Okay, then you can. So I come to the apples table and they are saying 0, 0,04. 0, 0,04 falls within my interval, so D is mutually beneficial. E is talking about computers. They are saying 55 computers. 55 is within my interval, therefore 55 is, I mean, this, um, this trade is mutually beneficial. So yeah, that's how you determine gains of trade and whether something is mutually beneficial or whether it's not mutually beneficial. So if you had something like one computer, 65 apples, they said computer, so you come to computers, they said 65, 65 is to this side, so it would only benefit, it would only benefit South Africa. So my advice is write the opportunity cost you are um, calculating, so it's computers apples write 
their intervals, the lowest the site, the highest the site, put the name of that country on top of its opportunity cost, do the same for apples, and then if whatever gain you are looking at falls within your interval, mutually beneficial to this side of the interval, it is beneficial for that country which you wrote here, to this side of your um, um, number line, yeah, let's just pretend this is a number line. It is only beneficial for South Africa or whatever country you wrote there. So, yeah, I hope this helps. Please don't forget to comment. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please share this video so that it helps other people just as it helped you. Don't be selfish. Share it to somebody else who might be in need of it. And, like, let's all save a semester. Let's save the semester. Let's save everyone's semesters. Bye, guys. See you guys in the next video.